G'day, welcome to Down Under Woodworks. In today's video, I'm gonna be building a small coffee table. But with this coffee table, the design of the top is what some people would probably consider asking for trouble. The timber for this table was reclaimed hardwood handrails from an old deck. It was about 140 millimeters wide with two bullnose profiles that were cut off later. I put the timber through the usual milling processes, first on the jointer to get one flat surface. I was lucky with these because they were already pretty flat with no cupping or twisting. Then with the flat face down, I ran them through the thicknesser to get the opposite face parallel. The helical head on my thicknesser made easy work of these. One of the boards had some nails in it that I just couldn't dig out, so there was only one thing to do. This board was gonna yield two pieces anyway, and the nails were right in the cut zone. I then ran the boards through the thicknesser one more time with the jointer face up because it leaves a much smoother finish. I used the table saw to rip off one of the bullnose profiles on each board. And then used the jointer to get that edge flat and square to one face. and then back to the table saw to rip them to their final width, which was 100 mil. I like to use biscuits when edge gluing boards together to make a tabletop, and with these they were thick enough for two rows of biscuits. I used a slot cutter bit in the router table, making sure to reference each board off the same face, which in this case was the top. I glued the top together in stages just to make it easier and because the two outside boards were going to be mitered. And to cut those miters, I used my zero clearance miter sled. I'll leave a link in the description to the build video for it. With the glue dry on the top piece, I cut it to final length to match the miters on the two outside boards. And then just repeated the process to edge glue the rest of the top together. Now before you go and hit the comments section and tell me I've got this wrong and I haven't considered timber expansion and the top is just going to self-destruct, I know. I know I'm pushing the rules, but that's what this build's about. It's a love job for a family member. It's my brother actually. Uh, he's not paying for it. It's a freebie. So I thought that gives me a bit of license to experiment a little bit. To combat any expansion, I decided to spline the end pieces. So using my slot cutter again, I cut a 6mm wide slot along the whole length of the join. And then made splines from 6mm ply. I glued the end pieces in one at a time to avoid any glue up stress and panic.
With the tabletop now complete, I turned my attention to the legs. These were made from the same reclaimed hardwood. The leg pieces went through the same milling process with their final width being about 80 millimeters. When you have a lot of miters to cut, always mark them on the ends of the boards because it's easy to make a mistake and cut them the wrong way or on the wrong side. The top and bottom faces of the legs are never to be seen. So I chose to use screws through those faces to strengthen each mitre joint. I glued the legs up first, then added the screws once they'd set. So at this point in time, I've gotten one of the legs glued together, but um, it's a bit of an issue with it and it's time to take a pause in the build and discuss why it's a very good idea to do dry fits before you do glue ups. Now, even though I was very happy with um, the setup of my table saw, I just took it for granted that everything was okay. So I went ahead and just uh, glued up this leg uh, it's it's a little bit gappy looking at it now the day after uh, I'm not happy with it the reason why I continued on with it I was I was in a rush I wanted to get this done uh, I wanted to get it done last night before I uh, finished for the night so I just so I just persisted with it and I shouldn't have and I'll show you basically what has happened yeah so after the issues I had with the first leg I thought I'd mock up the second one just to find out what's going on so I've got it all together here now, and if you can see, I've got that mitre sitting perfect. Uh, that one's perfect as well. And the third one also. But then when I go to the fourth one, there's a huge gap. Yeah, so like I said, I was very happy with the setup that I had to cut these mitres, so I'm really at a loss as to what happened here. But no use crying over spilt milk. Got to get the job done. Basically, I'm just going to recut these miters and uh, make sure that I dry fit them before doing the glue up. With this leg here, um, I'm going to cut through the miters on the bandsaw and, uh, as I said, recut them and make sure that they're perfect. Luckily for me, I'm not working to any tight specifications with these uh, legs. The overall height of these legs, well, they're, they are a square is uh, 370 millimeters, but if they end up at 360 or 365, that'll have absolutely no effect on the finished product. So I'm lucky there. Yeah, so I cut these miters with the bandsaw because of its thin kerf, because I wanted to keep as much timber as possible. I then readjusted the table saw and cut the miters again, and they were all perfect. So it was glue up time again. I glued the legs up in halves first. And once they had set, I joined the two halves together to make each leg. The legs were fixed to the table using furniture bolts and threaded inserts.
I used a little beeswax to help the inserts thread into this super hard timber. The bolt holes in the legs were drilled oversized to allow for any movement. And then it was my favourite part, applying the finish. I used a mixture of equal parts of linseed oil, spa varnish and turps. I was amazed at how beautiful this timber came up with this finish. Finally, I attached the legs, making sure not to over tighten the screws, and the table was done. Well that's it, the table's turned out great. Like I said, I'm just amazed at how that uh, grain has popped with the, uh, the finish that I used on it. And my brother loved it, so it's all good. So far the table's still together, so we'll see how it goes. If you're still with me and you've watched through to the end, then I thank you very much for your time and hopefully I've inspired you to, I don't know, try something different, work a little bit outside the box, bend the rules a little bit, it never hurts. If you want to know what I'm up to between videos, you can follow me on Instagram. But until the next one, you guys all have a great day.